I'd like to tell you about something which happened to me during one of my attempts. Um, this was my third attempt and I was writing the mains exam and uh, this was the essay paper and um, I was feeling very confident about my essay writing abilities because I've written the exam twice or so I thought and I went into the exam and sure enough you are greeted with these with the choices in the question paper from which you have to choose and uh, write an essay on this so i could quickly glanced at the options and i picked one topic which i felt i knew about and i wanted to write about the topic which i picked was human intelligence is more important than technological intelligence for counter terrorism i felt good when i saw this topic and jumped on it i didn't think much before choosing it and i began working and so after a few hours of work i wrote what i thought was a good essay and came out feeling very confident later that day i searched about the topic and i realized the blunder that i had committed i had written the entire essay on the wrong thing i had thought that human intelligence was the intelligence which human beings possess as opposed to machines, the kind of thing which Albert Einstein had a lot of. But the topic of the essay was about something else entirely. Human intelligence was this kind of intelligence. It was the kind of intelligence in counter-terrorism which human beings gather on the ground, such as from informers or spies, without using technology. It is good old-fashioned intelligence gathering that we see in spy movies. And my heart just sank. I knew that I had committed a big mistake and that I would pay the price. When the final list came out that year, I still cleared the exam and secured a rank of about 500. But I got only 45% marks in the essay paper. I didn't get lower marks probably because I had flow and structure and some good examples which were my saving grace. But I must have lost at least 40 or 50 marks because of this mistake and it cost me a whole year of preparation. I could have scored much higher and my rank would have jumped quite a bit. The first thing I want to tell you guys is that the essay exam is not like any other exam. The choices of the topic which you make in the beginning can make all the difference. Remember that the moment I chose this topic, my fate was sealed. This video is all about how you will make sure that this never happens to you. And in the process, you will learn from my mistake because you cannot live long enough to make them all yourself. Definitely not in the UPSC where you will have to wait a year or more for your next attempt. I want to make sure that this doesn't happen to you. Let's see what happened that day. Some of the things which are obvious about my mistakes are that I failed to understand the topic, definitely. I was overconfident. I chose a topic which I did not have a background in and actually no special knowledge of. I had not read any literature on counter-terrorism and only knew generic things about it. I was impulsive. I took the one topic which I felt emotionally charged about at that time, I had dreams of becoming an IPS officer and the December 11 attacks on Mumbai had just happened and I jumped on the opportunity to show the examiner what a good officer I would make. Big mistake. Now, all this is fine and you're probably thinking that you won't be as stupid as me and make the same mistakes. But I want to warn you that you probably will fall into the same trap. And this is because of the way your brain works. Here, I'd like to introduce you to Dr. Daniel Kahneman, who is a Nobel Prize winning economist, psychologist, and the author of the world famous and incredible book called Thinking Fast and Slow. Now, Dr. Kahneman has spent his whole life researching how humans make decisions and has put the lessons of his life's research in this book. The research tells us that there are two types of thinking systems in the brain. 
system 1 and system 2. These are the systems through which the brain processes information and makes decisions. System 1 is faster and runs on autopilot. It is almost effortless. It is instinctive, intuitive and instantaneous. We use system 1 about 95% of the time. Basically, whenever you do something without thinking hard about it, system 1 is in control. Kind of like him. Not advisable to say the least. System 1 is what is in control when you do impulsive shopping. Or in the exam, when you impulsively pick a topic which is not the best choice, like I did. Now on the other hand, system 2 is activated when you take slow, thoughtful and deliberate decisions. It is much more analytical, but system 2 takes effort to use. It is slow and requires focus. We use it only about 5% of the time. You use system 2 when you think about the math questions in CSAT or when you carefully generate points for your essay. But the problem is that your brain prefers to use system 1 rather than system 2. This is because system 1 is so much easier to use and so much faster. You can also think of system 1 and system 2 as the rabbit and the turtle. If you have heard the story, you know that slow and steady wins the race. The turtle always wins. System 2 is the turtle and it will lead to better decisions. So you go into the examination and you see something like this. And of course, system one will take over. You don't have time to do slow and deliberate thinking on each of these options. This exam situation in the UPSC, especially in the SA exam, is an ideal, ideal situation for system one to take over. You are under stress. You are short of time. And there are eight choices in front of you from which you have to choose. All kinds of bad reasons will pop up in your head. You will probably think, so I'll choose this topic because most people will not choose this topic and I should be different to stand out. Or you might think that I will choose this topic because I feel I know about this topic like I did. Or maybe you choose a topic because you are emotionally invested in that topic. These are all indications that system one has taken control. Okay, so we need to use system two while making choices in the exam. That's why I designed an exercise called the decision matrix, which will force you to engage system two. Let's see what it is and enter the matrix. When I say matrix, I don't mean this kind of matrix. I actually mean this kind of matrix. I designed the decision matrix as a set of questions. You have to give a score of 0 to 9 for each question, 0 being the lowest and 9 being the highest score. The decision matrix is an exercise in introspection which will prevent impulsive thinking. It will force you to think hard about the topics which you consider and it will force you to engage system 2, system 2 thinking in your brain. Now there are no right or wrong answers and no one will judge you. So don't worry and be completely honest while doing this exercise. Let me show you an example from a previous year question, which was capitalism cannot bring inclusive growth. Now the first question or the first decision criteria that we see is that the topic is related with my optional subject. How closely related this topic was closely related to my optional subject because my optional subject was public administration and I had a fairly good idea about capitalism and inclusive growth and I thought that on a scale of 0 to 9 I should give this a 7. Maybe it could have been more closely related had my optional been economics in which case I might have given this a 9. But anyway moving on the second question that the matrix asks you is, I have completely understood what the topic is about. Now, you just need to introspect a little bit, look at the topic again and see if you have understood the crux of it. And it's okay if you don't have the exact answer right now, 
just search for that feeling inside you which tells you if you have understood this topic or not capitalism cannot bring inclusive growth i feel like i have understood it but not completely 100% so i give this a score of 6 the third question is i have practiced this topic before now i have not practiced this topic before and i give this a score of 3 because i have dealt with these topics in answers which i had written for my mains examination in my optionals so i had some idea and i had some ideas about this from gs also so i give this a 3 and not lower moving on to the fourth question it asks you i can think about three concrete examples for the argument for the argument now for the argument means if we want to argue in favor of what the topic is and the topic is capitalism cannot bring inclusive growth so if i want to argue that it cannot bring inclusive growth can i think about three concrete examples of this and i think that i can there are many examples of it i think that i can but i don't have all three in my mind right now so i'll give them a six and the next question is i can think about three concrete examples against the argument so in this case it would be capitalism can bring inclusive growth and can you think about three examples in which you can argue that yes capitalism can bring inclusive growth similar to the previous question i feel fairly confident that i can conjure up three such arguments and three such concrete examples so i'll again give this a six then it asks you i can think of at least three connection of the topic with india lucky enough in this question in this particular topic it the examples which come to my mind and the study which i have done in public administration is related to capitalism and inclusive growth and so yes the example in my mind are from india and so i will give this a 6 the last question is i can think of the connection of the topic to something current something in the current affairs something which is happening right now and as part of current affairs which you read about and something which automatically connects very organically with the topic and i couldn't think of something like that uh to be honest and so i gave this a score of 3 i i summed it up my total for this topic was 37 let me take you now to another topic this is a topic which nearly destroyed me we talked about this before the topic was is human intelligence human intelligence is better than technological intelligence for countering terrorism again the first question is asking me if the topic is related to my optional subject or if yes how closely related and it is not at all related to my optional subject maybe it has some connection somewhere but i don't think that i know enough about it so i'll give this a score of 2 it asks me then if i have completely understood what the topic is about now this is tricky because i think that i i have understood the topic but i and i realized that i didn't really understand the topic as much as i should so i'll give this a score of 4 maybe i am right maybe i am wrong it doesn't have to be a very accurate score you just give the score which you feel is the most honest the third question is i have practiced this topic before i have not so i should either give this a score of 1 or 0 the next question is i can think about three concrete examples for the argument can in human is human intelligence better then technological intelligence for countering terrorism i don't think that i can think of many concrete examples maybe i can come up with one or maybe two if i'm lucky i don't know so i'll give this a um, score of 3 moving on to the next one the same question can i think about three concrete examples against the argument so in this case it would be human intelligence is not better than technological intelligence for countering terrorism and again I don't think that I have a lot of examples in my mind uh, to actually support this argument or actually argue against it so I'll give this a, a 3 again. The 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 next question is I can think of at least three connections of the topic with India. Yes, I think so because the whole topic revolves around India and if I was to address this topic ever then I would be talking specifically about India because it's the only country which I have some knowledge about. so i'll give this a slightly higher score of 5 and again you don't have to be completely accurate this is just an exercise which is forcing you to think hard that is all that it is designed to do 
this core is not going to get added anywhere. The last question is, I can think of the connection of the topic to something current. Uh, not exactly. I couldn't think of something which is happening in the current. Maybe you can. And so if you do, then you give this a higher score. But for me, the honest score was four. So I gave it a four. And my total score for this topic was 22. Now, this was obviously much lower than 37. And this, this score, this number is telling us clearly that I should not have picked this topic. Had I gone through these questions in my mind before picking this topic, I would never have picked it. Now, of course, you won't have time to do this entire exercise in the exam and that won't be required because once you have done this exercise enough times, it will become automatic. When you see the questions in the exam, when you see the topics in the exam, you will go through the questions in this decision matrix mentally and make a good choice. Most importantly, after you practice this exercise, you will never make the wrong choice. Another very important thing is that this exercise will force you to think hard about the topic. It will force you to actually face how much you know. It will force you to distinguish between how much you think you know and how much you actually know. You will be forced to deconstruct the topic and actually think about it from the point of view of a topic for an essay. When you look at a topic, you should be able to choose based on how nicely you can write an essay about it and not based on how much you know about it. Remember that the essay is not a test of your knowledge. It is a test of organization and conciseness. I hope this was helpful. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.